Islam, peace, protect, sutek. I want to give thanks for the opportunity to have your eye in your ear right now. Um, a lot of y'all might know me as Prime, Iron Sheik, Brother Kujo, Sutek L. And basically, this DVD is to um, be a pre prelude to A.J. Rashid's lecture that he was supposed to do in Toronto that um, they didn't let him come across the border. So what we decided to do was to take the initiative to present some information in order to give people um, a little bit of understanding as to why this lecture was supposed to happen and the seriousness of nationality and the fact that if we don't claim one or if we do claim one, the beast is going to continue to do what they're doing in order to, to stop or to put a blockade in front of that manifesting and that meaning um, people labeled as Negro, Black, Colored, um, African American, African Canadian, etc. having a nationality. So first of all, before we even get into the info, the reason that we're doing um, this work is because of the Prophet Nobu Juali. So we give high honors and praises to the Prophet for coming on the scene as Allah's last Prophet to tell us the truth about our nationality and our birthrights that was taken from us by the Inquisitionists, the, you know, the, the Franks, the, the Brits, the Englishmen, um, the Pilgrims, the colonizers, the Crusaders, etc., who came to this land that they call today North, South, Central America and the Caribbean, right, and usurped the power from this land by getting the original people of this land out of their status that ties them to this land and makes them, makes them the inheritors of the rich culture that is in this land. So we're going to start with um, just quickly going through um, the Moorish literature in the Holy Quran Circle 7. Um, and the chapter is called, What Shall We Call Him? So often our various journalists find trouble in selecting the proper name for the Moorish American. Some say Negro, other will brand him race man, still other will call him Afro-American. And then comes color, dark American, coon, shine, the brethren, and your folks. It is indeed a hard matter to find something suitable for the various occasions where a title needs to be used. Is it that these people have no proper name? Did they have a national name when they were first brought to these shores in the early part of the 17th century? If so, what was it? Did not the land from which they were forced have a name? It now appears a good idea for those whose duty it is to write for the various journals to find out what the national name of the forefathers of these people was. Also look into the history of the founders of civilization and see who they were and where they stood in the building of the present civilization. Probably two hours in an up-to-date library would serve to relieve the strain of our men of letters. When the occasion presents itself for a title of these people, the matter of the various names given to these 22 million people with all colors of every race of the globe was an act of European psychology. They gave him a name, then defined it as something inferior to theirs. White they define as the color of purity. Black, they say, represents everything evil. The Negro, as they were called in this nation, have no nation to which they might look with pride. Their history starts with the close of the Civil War, or more properly, with, the, with his being forced to serve someone else. Thus, he is separated from the illustrious history of his forefathers, who were the founders of the first civilization of the old world. This matter should be looked into with hope of correcting it. So the Prophet Nobu Juali, during that time, knew that there was a problem with us having these labels because he 
he looked just like us and he wasn't labeled those labels, right? The prophet also um, had a lot of documentation done of things that he said by other Moors that were alive during the time of the prophet. And in the book of oral statements and prophecies of Noble Juali, we could see the significance of the prophet to us. Um, oral statement number 13, Brother J. Blakely Bay said that the Holy Prophet Noble Juali said one day every wheel of industry is going to stop and when they start up again it will be in the Asiatic's favor. So right now, like we're in that time where wheels of industry have stopped. People are losing their jobs, layoffs, bailout packages, etc. Right? All, all of that is due to the European psychology that they did on these lands. To the people who were Moors that they now call Negro black color. Right? Um, the idea of industry stopping is based on the fact that the industry was inflated with fiat currency. And with fiat currency having no value, any, any faith in something that has no value is eventually going to implode on itself. And right now we're living in that time. And yeah, we're talking about commerce, etc. But still, this still has to do with nationality. Because when we understand the fact that everybody else has a nationality, and we're the only people who don't have one, and we, we think that it's, it's racism when it's a war against nationality. It's a war against you being able to claim who you really are without someone else's assumption or presumption of you. Right? And the other one that I wanted to read, um, Brother J. Blakely Bay said that the Holy Prophet said, if the European be just, they would have an Asiatic vice president. And if they had an Asiatic president, they would have a European vice president. Right? Something that's happening today, right now. There's the Asiatic president and a European vice president, right? Now, it's not, it's not, the secret is that they wanted to keep Nobu Juali out of the minds of the people based on the information that Nobu Juali was bringing. The agents and provocateurs of nationality receive their checks or their um, booty, their compensation from the colonizer and that false sense of security that the sellouts receive from the colonizer because the colonizer only pays them in fiat allows them to do the work of the colonizer because they think that they got paid for a job right when they're really doing the job for free because the colonizer gave you nothing the colonizer gave you a war against your nationality. Because if you're a national, you deal with gold and silver. But there's no gold and silver in circulation because they took it out and replaced it with the fiat currency in order to get you under their jurisdiction, wherever you are on the planet. Because if you go everywhere on the planet, we're going to see that they have paper money. And paper money doesn't have any value. So this isn't something that... that we're just coming out and saying that, well, yeah, nationality. This is something that's been going on for thousands of years. And it's a, it's a fiction that they've created that people put blind faith in that gives it power. Right? So the truth is that you have a nationality and that you're not a Negro. You're not a black person. You're not a colored person. You're not an African-American, African-Canadian. You're not a Trinidadian, Jamaican, Bayesian, Grenadian, Mexican, Puerto Rican. All these names are labels, right? Now, in speaking about nationality, we're going to go to um, Truth 
about your birthrights. And this is an RV, RV Bay publication in association with Moore's Order of the Round Table. Truth about your birthrights. Of nationality. Nationality is that quality, character, fact, and reality of a person or a people belonging to a nation or state. Nationality determines a person's political status as an individual and as people, especially with reference to allegiance. And so nationality determines allegiance, while domicile determines civil status. Nationality arises at birth, superior sovereign citizen, or by naturalization, inferior legalized alien citizen. Nationalization is the acquisition or superior claim of a government over persons and or properties for the purpose of securing what is rightfully the property or possession of the citizens alone, especially if a foreign power has usurped rights or imposed upon the people. Then the legitimate government has the supreme right to nationalize and make claim over privately owned business from abusive foreign interests who have abused their corporate operations with the jurisdiction of another lawful, lawfully specified government or nation. Of birthrights. Birthrights are any of those rights which are acquired at birth and more succinctly involve heritage. Heritage is in reference to that which is inherited, such as that which one receives or will receive from one's parents, predecessors or ancestors, etc. These rights may pertain to culture, money, property, traits, character, land, etc. Birthrights thus are usually looked at from the perspective of primogenitor. In order to promote goodwill and harmony in North American society, Prophet Noble Jolly established the Old Canaanite Temple in the land territory known as Newark, New Jersey, United States Republic, North America. A core interest and function of this organized Aboriginal People's Association was and is to restore the unlawfully stolen nationality and birthrights of the Aboriginal indigenous Moors of North America. So the war against nationality. Um, basically starts with the fact that there's individuals who parade around in lodges, in um, organizational structures that are wearing the national headwear of the Moors as their um, group's headwear. So we're going to quote Brother Pleasant Bay, the brother's powerful elder, has a book out right now, um, Exhuming of a Nation. Um, contact Brother Pleasant Bay at sevenseelspublications.com. Make no misunderstanding about Western Freemasonry. It is the most worshipful God in Europe in which African people know nothing. Yes, there have been generations of Negro, Moorish, and even Muslim who have taken oaths to worship this Goliath God of their oppressor, but none has seen beyond its shadows. If all the sun-kissed men of Africa could see underneath the covers of this poison commented education and reveal its evil worldwide intentions, they would run for their very lives. The God has and will sacrifice portions of its own kingdom to achieve order out of chaos. The foundation of this order is based upon a murder. Yet it is the Europeans' Illuminati which has controlled every president since Woodrow Wilson gave life to Western Freemasonry, which in turn gave birth to the Western demigods of Shriners and the Ku Klux Klan. The Western Freemason uses colleges, churches, civic organizations, and armed forces to incubate its prosperity. Moors have been working for years to understand the coded powers of Western Freemasonry, not realizing this God is not for them, but about them. 